This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a satirical film called The Bling Ring. Here, director Sofia Coppola spearheads the retelling of a story based on an actual event that occurred around the late 2000s. And to do just that, the film is doused in excess, glamour, reckless abandon, and ultra-rich socialites who leave their house keys under their doormat. Looking at you, Paris. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Like any proper critic of vapid celebrity culture, the bling ring kicks off by thrusting us into a dizzying house of lavish luxury and opulence, filled to the brim with excessive designer items that has you wondering if this is an opening sequence or a logo quiz. Several teenagers have snuck into said house, and now they're bagging all of the expensive items, which are no doubt worth more than our life savings. Quite harrowing, really. The introductory scene ends with a CCTV clip of the culprits sneaking out of the house. Later, one of the teenage culprits is interviewed on live television, and the girl attempts her best at sounding like a bona fide celebrity. And what better way to do that than by mentioning that you're a spiritual person who wants to lead a charity and a country one day. One year later, the mild-mannered teenage boy Mark Hall starts his first day at Indian Hills High School in California. The day passes by uneventfully, until he's approached by Rebecca Ann. She asks him how he ended up in dropout school, and Mark explains that it's because of having too many absences in his old school. As for Rebecca, she's there substance abuse. Rebecca invites Mark to the beach that afternoon, together with her friend, Chloe. Then later that evening, they attend a small party at Rebecca's house. Mark and Rebecca take a liking to each other, and they bond over their mutual love for high fashion and celebrity worship. Soon, Rebecca takes Mark outside, and Rebecca starts checking for any unlocked cars. Upon finding an unlocked sports car, she steals the wallet inside. Though Mark is surprised at first, he's quick to go along with the pilfering. The instant connection didn't just hit them. It came crashing into them like a truck or a sports car, to be more on brand. Mutual interests aside, it's not every day you get to help your new well-to-do friend rob other well-to-do people blindly. But though the road ahead looks paved with sirens, Mark's still in it for the ride. After a while, two things become clear. One, Mark is self-conscious. It shows in the way he moves and behaves, but he outright admits to this too. Two, that incident wasn't just a one-time thing. Rebecca, as it turns out, has an awful habit of stealing. One afternoon, Rebecca and Mark visit one of their peers' houses, and it's left unattended as the owners are on vacation. The power duo head inside to raid their belongings, and they pay extra attention to the expensive items and cash. Ever the daring one, Rebecca even uses the car in the driveway, stating that the family won't be home yet from vacation. Of course, Mark is nervous about getting caught, so he convinces her to leave with him. Later, Mark and Rebecca go shopping with their stolen money. Rebecca's definitely the kind of teenager that your parent probably warned you about as a kid. She often indulges in risk-taking behavior and has little concern about the consequences. After all, it's one thing to engage in petty thievery, and it's another to do it so brazenly. With how they don't bother hiding their faces and how they leave their fingerprints everywhere, it begs the question, does Rebecca think that she'll never get caught, or does she simply not care? Soon, Mark is introduced to Rebecca's friends, Nikki and Sam Moore, at a nightclub. Nikki and Sam are both homeschooled by their offbeat mother, Lori. That evening, Mark takes notice of the many celebrities in the club, including Kristen Dunst and Paris Hilton. Together, Rebecca, Chloe, Mark, Nikki, and Sam form a sort of clique, and the more time he spends with her, the more Mark loves Rebecca like a sister. Being the ringleader of the group, Rebecca gets the idea to track down Paris Hilton's house. Mark looks it up on the internet and finds that it isn't very far. Rebecca tells Mark that the two of them should try to get inside her house, and later on, they do exactly that. One would imagine that busting into the home of the ultra-rich and famous would be impossible for teenagers. But luckily, Paris Hilton was considerate enough to leave her house keys under the mat. Inside the house, Mark and Rebecca find an assortment of clothes and accessories that costs more than whatever metaphor we can come up with. After a while, Mark feels nervous about being caught and tries to convince Rebecca to leave. Rebecca soon complies and the two of them exit the premises without a hitch. 
From the very beginning, Mark appears to be the more grounded one. Unlike Rebecca, Mark still has some semblance of risk assessment, but it's all diluted by his desire to keep his friendship with Rebecca, along with their shared need or obsession to live the glamorous celebrity life. Because while they live very comfortable lives, they don't have the glamour, the flashiness that the press and other people like them would flock to. Later, they start telling their friends what they did, and this has all of them wanting to go inside Paris Hilton's house too. There, they raid her immense stash of luxury items. After an indulgent evening at the socialite's house, followed by some clubbing, the group gets into a car accident. As for Chloe, she gets taken into the station for driving under the influence of alcohol. The little gang of robbers has turned their little pastime into a full-on habit. After another visit to Paris Hilton's, they raid the homes of other celebrities, such as Megan Fox and Audrina Patridge. Along the way, Rebecca has Mark taking recreational substances with her too. At Megan Fox's place, Nikki finds a handgun. Sam takes a liking to the gun and irresponsibly plays with it. She pretends to shoot Mark, who tries to take a gun away from her. But of course, their antics don't go unpunished forever. Their heist in Orlando Bloom's house in particular earns them the attention of the police as their faces are caught on the security cameras. There are two kinds of entitlement at play here. The first is the kind that well-off people have where if they want something, all they have to do is get it. This is especially obvious with how flippant they are about their heists and how they're leaving their traces all over, like they're untouchable. Then there's the entitlement towards celebrities. People tend to feel like they should have the right and access to these celebrities' lives, and Rebecca's group just takes it a step further. Chloe takes Mark to her boyfriend, Ricky, the nightclub promoter. Mark shows Ricky the Rolex watch he stole from Orlando Bloom, and since Ricky knows that it's stolen, he pays less than what the watch is actually worth. However, it's still enough to fetch Mark a handsome $5,000. Soon, the group's antics and fashionable clothes earn them a reputation among their peers. However, Audrina Patridge eventually releases the security footage of them on the news. Their only saving grace is that none of them are identifiable. Some members of the group are spooked and want to lie low for a while, but Rebecca doesn't care. Instead, she leads the charge for more burglaries. It is clear that among them, Rebecca is the one who's most consumed by the obsession with the clothes fame, and a glamorous lifestyle. One can even argue that she's disappointed that she wasn't recognized. Perhaps Nikki is a close second, especially with the kind of home life that she leads. It would seem that Lori, her mother, has been grooming her to become a celebrity since day one. Soon the gang goes to Rachel Bilson's house, where they almost get caught. They also go back to Hilton's house again. This time, Sam's boyfriend, Rob, joins in on the fun by stealing some jewelry. Their heists becomes more and more daring, and Rebecca has plunged Mark further and further into his substance addiction. Eventually, Rebecca cooks up her magnum opus, the burglary of her most worshipped icon, Lindsay Lohan. After some time, Rebecca is forced to leave California. She tells Mark that she's heading to Vegas to stay with her father after having some family issues at home. Mark believes her and takes her to the terminal. Shortly after, a wide-scale arrest of all the known burglars is set in motion after the police have linked the security footages of all the known victims. Mark's one of the first to be arrested, and thanks to his cooperation, the authorities are easily able to track down Rebecca. Sadly, this puts a strain on their relationship. Once the operation's done, the arrests include Mark, Chloe, Rebecca, Nikki, and Rob as the only proven participants in the robberies. Mark looks back at his relationship with Rebecca with sadness. He loved Rebecca like a sister, and she was the first person he felt truly connected to. So naturally, it hurt him when he ended up betraying her. For all their criminal and debauched endeavors, these people are still basically children, and the glamorous lifestyle that media keeps romanticizing has blinded them to its emptiness and futility. In the aftermath of the events, all of the Bling Ring members are elevated to celebrity status. Vanity Fair interviews several of them. In Mark's interview, he shows remorse for his actions, and now he has a full understanding of what he's done. He mentions that he feels ambivalent towards the fame and attention he's earned, 
because of the wrong thing that he did, stating that America has a sick fascination with the Bonnie and Clyde story. After their trial, each member is sentenced to prison and is ordered to pay millions of dollars in restitution for the stolen items. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there's Nikki. She ravishes every opportunity to have a camera pointed at her. During her Vanity Fair interview, she claims that she's some sort of religious humanitarian and shows total deniability of the fact that she was part of any of the burglaries. Ironically, Sam and Laurie seem proud and jealous of her newly attained fame. In the final scene, Nikki is interviewed after 30 days in prison. She talks about how she shared a cell block with Lindsay Lohan. The host tries to speak about how scary it must have been for her that Lindsay was with her since Nikki was allegedly involved in the robbery of Lindsay's home. Nikki commits to her innocent act and changes the subject to promote her website where everyone can follow her journey. The film decides to center around Nikki at the very end. The reasoning behind this is that she seems to be the last of the prominent members of the gang to accept her situation and be honest with herself. But also, in Nikki, we find the film's essence. Nikki is a product of the over-romanticized glitter of celebrity culture. Everyone wants to be somebody, and as some critics have pointed out, with the rise of reality TV shows and the power of social media, the line between a regular person and a glorified celebrity is now blurred. Anybody can be a star. And with children, yes, children like Nikki. The appeal of a life being showered by praise and attention is irresistible. At her age, she's yet to fully understand what being a celebrity entails. And with the temptation nowadays to bask in the approval of strangers in social media, we must remember the fleeting nature of fame and how empty it can be. As a film, The Bling Ring is an attempt to critic the descendant life of celebrities and our obsession with them. It's meant to say that fame is not real and it isn't the key to happiness. However, what's ironic about this film is that Sofia Coppola does too much of a good job in making the same excess look so good in her chic montages and fabulous camera shots, focusing on the glorious gaudy opulence of wealth and luxury. But then again, perhaps there's nothing wrong with being just a bit fabulous. Just remember to put the key to your house in a more discreet place, like in a potted plant. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.